Just to remind you how much money is sloshing around there, I want to just uh, give everybody a little update about that. So uh, let that ruminate in your mind as we talk about today. As the Bitcoin ETF, the question becomes, has it been a complete failure? We're going to take a look at the Bitcoin ETF, the Ethereum ETF, and we're also going to take a look at some types of uh, presidential stances as they move forward for the presidential election debate, which will happen tonight. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? So first of all, there was a great article today, and it was between essentially two people. Uh, one was Matt Hogan, and the other one was Jim Bianco. And what, it, what the question was, was, was the Bitcoin ETF a failure? And they're going to take a look at a couple different metrics. What I did was I linked their discussions in the uh, description below so you can check those out. But I just want to go over this real quick just to see where everything at. So the uh, article was titled Wealth Advisors Adopting Bit Bitcoin ETS Faster Than Any in History, says the big wise CIO. So this was actually from a couple of posts today. And it starts off that uh, investment researcher, Jim Bianco, who I got to tell you, if, if you're not following Jim on X, uh, fantastic information, a lot of great details as far as macro, what's going on in the crypto, the crypto and traditional space. Real smart guy. And he said... Uh, who characterized Bitcoin ETF adoption among wealth advisors as small, knowing that approximately 85% of Bitcoin ETF uptake <clears throat> is not from TradFi institutions. This kind of goes against what most people were talking about, how it actually was a lot of institutions coming in, but it looks like it may just be a bunch of retail. And this actually comes from uh, his post that he has here. And I linked this in the description. You can check it out. But what he's talking about, and he, he breaks it down pretty well, is these, these data points. And he takes a look at the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF, GBTC, and the uh, percentage owned as far as advisors, holding companies, hedge fund managers, and so on and so forth. And then the institution type cost basis. And he takes a look at that between Grayscale. And you, see, you can see it's not that much. Grayscale, Fidelity, Fidelity uh, Wise Bitcoin, FBTC, hedge fund managers, investment advisors, brokerage, banks, trust, family offices, and so on and so forth. And you can see the numbers quite reduced. iShares, Bitcoin Trust, hedge fund managers, investment advisors, 8%, 7%, and so on and so forth. So he makes the case that there's not really that much institutions and essentially saying that, hey, look, this is really not a great ETF. So that is his position. And I uh, linked the entire thread in the description. You can check that out yourself. But it comes, it's quite interesting because Bianco's comments do come at... Uh, Surprising good timing as the 11 US-based spot Bitcoin ETFs saw a combined net outflows of 1.2 billion in the last eight days. And if we take a look at heyapollo.com, we can see that yes, it is uh, sliding down quickly actually. And there's a big difference between say like the Ethereum ETF, which I gotta tell you, which has been going on now since July, end of July or so. So we are August, month and a half, somewhere around there. So I know when people talk about the Ethereum ETF, they say, well, you have to understand when people are selling, there is a wash trade rule and they can't get back in for 30 days. So it's going to be a little bit of a reduction, but then they're going to come right back in. And I got to tell you, over the last one, two, three, four, five, weekend doesn't count, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, Roughly the last two weeks or so, you see negative flows for the Ethereum ETF. Maybe it'll take some time to take off. I'm not for sure. Hasn't been that great. But if we take a look at the Bitcoin ETF, as far as the total net flows, we can see it's been actually quite successful. And it's been quite a bit of Bitcoin sloshing around, and it's always been positive. Now, we topped out here at a 304,000 on August 26th. But from that point, we've actually gone down almost 20,000 Bitcoin or so. 283.6. And of course, those are, uh, they would be considered, yes, negative flows for that time frame. But overall, and look how successful this has been. So uh, that's what we have right there, which is pretty positive. However, we should always take a look here. Longer term trends. Point two, continue Bitcoin ETF adoption among wealth advisors. In August, Morgan Stanley, the largest wealth manager in the U.S., authorized its 15,000 financial advisors to start recommending Bitcoin ETFs. So that's positive, I should say. But then the question then is, well, what was the opposite side of Bianco's argument? 
And that's where Matt Hogan comes in. Matt Hogan, CIO at Bitwise Investment. He says it poignantly here. He says, look, Jim is wrong. Investment advisors are adopting Bitcoin ETFs faster than any new ETF in history. So maybe it's not a bench of as many institutions, but it still is pretty fast adoption. Let's look at his own data focused on IBIT. Per his table, IBIT has attracted one about a 1.5, 1.45 billion in net flows from investment advisors. He calls this small because it is a fraction of the $46 billion that has flowed into Bitcoin's ETF in total. But if you exclude all the other flows and just look at that, IBIT would be the second fastest growing ETF launch this year, excluding other Bitcoin ETFs out of 300 launches. And then he talks about there's only one ETF this year that has beaten this Bitcoin ETF. I didn't know this actually existed. It's called KLM, KLMT, an ESG ETF that was seeded by a single investor with $2 billion and trades on average 250 shares per day with zero investment advisor adoption. So if it wasn't for that crazy ETF, uh, Bitcoin ETF would be the most successful so far. <clears throat> and then he further laments that the truth is that investment advisors are adopting Bitcoin ETFs faster than any other ETF in history. It's just that their historic flows are overshadowed by the even more historic purchases of other investors. It's accurate to say investor managers represent a small fraction of buyers of Bitcoin ETFs, but it's not accurate to say that investment manager purchases of Bitcoin ETFs are small. So that's a lot to really digest. And it sounds good, it sounds positive, and what we like to take a look at two sides, but I can't just leave you with that. We have to take a look at all sides. And there was this last piece here, which kind of brought it home. And it talks about growth and moving forward and mass adoption. And it has, it has a good point here. Take this with a grain of salt because these are just surveys. Who knows how many there actually were that actually were surveyed. But it states, despite this growth, significant barriers still remain. According to research by Fund Research, Cerulli Associates, upwards of 55% of RIAs have no expectation of using or discussing crypto investments with their clients at any point in the future. And only 2.6% are actively rec recommending crypto to clients. These registered investment advisors, I just don't get it. I honestly just don't get it. Like, are these RAs just saying like, look, it's just too risky. It's just too volatile. You shouldn't get into it. I think they're doing their customers a disservice, honestly. And then it finishes up, it says, if you excluded all other flows and just looked at the 1.45 billion linked to investment advisors, IBIT will be the second fastest growing ETF launch this year out of 300 launches. So back and forth, back and forth. But again, I just, this just sticks with me about this survey and 55%, and that's, a, significant amount of individuals who just do not want to recommend crypto. That's the right, I should say. But I I don't know. We, we talked about this the last couple of days. Uh, a couple of days ago, we talked about, we took a look at individual stocks, S&P 500 or indices uh, versus Bitcoin itself over a prolonged time horizon, one year, three year, four year, and just how it, it did. And it was like no contest. Now moving forward, it's anybody's guess, but I mean, for the amount of limited history that we have, it's looking pretty good. And then of course, we talked about, uh, there was a uh, interview with Michael Saylor, where he sat, he sat down with CNBC and essentially he said, look, micro strategy is doing so well because we are essentially a proxy for Bitcoin. The things that we are doing, if other businesses did the same thing, they would see their stock price appreciate just like ours. So I just take a look at these and I take a look at that last piece with that with those RII, RIAs and they're saying, no, we don't recommend this and just kind of flabbergast me. Tell me where my thinking is wrong because it's just odd to me. But let me know in the comments section where I'm off and uh, we'll see. Anyhow, so that would conclude that piece. There was this one thing though, and I have to give a shout out to Shark Toshi Bitmoto because, I mean, all these things that we talk about, it's great in theory, right? But maybe we should be talking a little bit to the people around us. And he, and he or she had a pretty good point. They said, take the Bitcoin challenge, buy a hundred bucks of Bitcoin, wait one year. Now this, 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 this next part about then sell it and see how much you made, uh, you can do that or not, but maybe you should just start challenging people around you. Like, hey, you think it sucks? Buy a hundred bucks, see what happens. 
and then put your money where your mouth is. Just say, hey, in a year's time, if it doesn't do too well, I'll cover the losses. That would be a bet I would be willing to take with some of my friends and family. Anyhow, let me know if you want to do that or not, or we're just too crazy. And lastly, um, presidential election is tonight, or presidential election. Presidential election debate is tonight with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. So I'm not a big uh, the politics guy, and this is not a political channel. That's obvious. But there are some things I like to see tonight, and I just want to run this by everybody. So this is an article uh, by Crypto Slate. Harris campaign criticized for ignoring crypto and policy. I'm not going to say what I think here. I'm just going to say what the facts are. And here's the facts. So the facts are, this is actually from Alexander Grieve, who leads Government Affairs of Paradigm, noted that there was this, this piece, and I actually linked this in the description, which is the policies that VP Harris is going over and the policies that Trump is going over. And these are just the facts. And you can look through this and go from there. And if you want to donate, there you go. But if you just, and this is all of her positions laid out, very nice, very poignant. But if you just do like a quick command F and look for Bitcoin, it's not there. If you look for crypto, it's not there. If you look for Trump, well, it's like 29 times. And if you look over here for the GOP platform and you look for, well, Bitcoin, it's, it's, it's mentioned. Champion Innovation, let's see. What about crypto? Oh, there it is. Champion Innovation, Republicans will pave the way for future economic greatness leading the world emerging. I'm not telling you this is what they're gonna do. This is just the facts they laid it out. So this little piece here says, even though it didn't say specifically crypto, Alexander Grieve says he noted that there was a piece there that some might interpret the reference to other cutting edge industries as a non-decrypt. Let me see if that's actually in there. Cutting edge, let's just put edge. Oh, there it is. Uh, as president, Kamala Harris will build on this administration's progress to ensure American industries and, and workers thrive. Harris will continue to support American leadership in semiconductors, clean energy, AI, and other cutting edge industries of the future. Maybe, I guess, I don't know. And furthermore, he states, some might argue that other cutting edge industries of the future is a placeholder for crypto, but it's hard to continue to support something when the current administration, Biden, uh, they don't support it. And she hasn't said anything on the subject yet. That's why there's a debate tonight. Let's see if she gets pressed on that. And despite not mentioning the crypto sector in her policy statement, Harris will have a chance to outline her plans for tonight. So again, if you just want to see like, this is the policies of this person, this is the policies of that person, check out that link in the description. You can go from there. And then uh, I know some people will say, well, you know, maybe the Democrats are coming forth. This is from Eleanor Tourette from Fox. She says that uh, Senator Schumer sent a letter to his Senate colleagues where he mentioned priorities for passing bipartisan bipartisan legislation in the remaining months of Congress. Crypto legislation was not mentioned, but AI was, which was also mentioned uh, over here. So that's what we have right now. And if you would like to hang out with me for a little bit tonight, I will be doing a debate watch along. I'm not here to talk about, well, that was a, you know, they should really talk about this or that. It's just to watch the debate, see if they mention anything about crypto and Bitcoin, digital assets, and uh, kind of go from there. So there's a link in the description. That'll be on my second channel, Dan Degen. That is at uh, 9 a.m., excuse me, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. So that'd be 7 p.m. for me here in Texas. Uh, and that's it for today. So look, like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all the good stuff.